<laughs> As the sun sets on yet another beautiful day in the south, let me welcome you back to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. I'm out walking around the yard checking my notes on some of this stuff because I get sidetracked and say like check back in one week. It's been uh, two weeks. And I got a frame stuck to the lid, but it's full of frames. And I know they got a layer in there. I'm fairly certain of it. I'm pretty sure. 510 virgin question mark. They're hauling in piling. Check it tomorrow when I got a little more time. Listen over here. On 510, I put a virgin in. I gotta go check, make sure she's laying. Black queen. This one is a queen I got from a cutout. She's jet black, and I've decided I want to keep her. There's her offspring right there. For comparison's sake, I'll move over to here, and you can see the offspring of a straight Italian. I don't know what she is, but she was pretty, so I decided I'm going to keep her. And, uh, yeah, she's mine. Aside from that, what I'm doing out here is I quickly want to show you a couple of tools that uh, I, I use quite regularly, and those would be flashlights. Now, I use flashlights on 99, 95, 90, let's, let's go to 90, 90% 90 of the cutouts that I do. This is a WowTac A5. This is the one I've been using recently. This is the cool white. And I've got the bright white here. I'll show you quickly how it's packaged warning thing charging cable lanyard this is the bright white this one hasn't been used yet I gotta okay there it is 3650 lumen boy 3650 now I've been using the cool white over the bright white. To me, the cool white makes gives things a more natural look at night. Uh, if there's anything natural about a flashlight, I want to tell you, uh, uh, 3,650 advertised lumens comes with a battery. This, for comparison's sake, I won't show you the brand, but this is 4,000 lumen, and that's what you got to go to to get 4,000 lumens. 3,650 lumens in this little small package. Plus the mode's really easy. I've got mine set on low when it comes on. You just hold a button down for medium and high, it's 3,600 uh, off. When you turn it back on, it's back on the high setting unless you leave it on the low setting or the medium before you turn it off. If you just hold the switch down, it comes on to a two lumen. Probably ain't even showing up in the camera, but it's a like a one or two lumen brightness which is really nice from any setting from on any setting to whether it's on or off if you double click it automatically goes to the highest setting now i use it midday quite a lot let's see, full frame foundation that's ready in one week it was on the tenth i don't like selling foundationless equipment so this thing's still sitting here I need to go through it and look and make sure we've got a laying queen in there. This is on low and we're still an hour from sunset. It's pretty bright out here. But I can go through and much more easily spot eggs with a flashlight. And this one here, I'm probably going to have to move it up. I bet you it's honey bound right now. I just got this on here to keep the heat off of it from the sun a little bit. Same with the old foundations, keep the sun off of it a little bit. That's why those pallets are leaned up against that one over there. And then this one. Let's give it a helping hand right here. Keep the sun off the top of that one. The link for the WowTac A5 will be in the description below. Go check it out if you need a good light. This will be my this is my third and fourth from this manufacturer. Outstanding lights. And uh, I lost one of them. So I was glad to get these two new ones. I lost one of my good ones similar to this. I framed it up in somebody's house. <laughs> Sucks to lose it like that. It was two weeks before I realized where I, where I left it. 
Got some new ones though, and I like them. It's four o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. It's threatening rain. Been storms in the forecast all day. Ain't got nothing else to do. Let's go do a cutout. Look at here, I got busy and forgot to record anything. And thankfully they're close to the ground. I'm standing on the ground flat footed and can grab the edge of the roof, so it's pretty low. No ladder required. I'm getting heat signature all through over here. Maybe in here a little bit too. I can't really tell. I think I think probably right here is where it's going to end. But it looks like it goes down that way a little ways. I'm just stripping out the second layer of soffit. About to get started cutting that plywood out. I got to go down here and make a slice and then up to here. And then all that's ready to pry out. And it's not, doesn't look like it's dadoed into the fascia board. So all that ought to swing down pretty easy. Little backyard. Got a couple little kids. And it's a really super active hive. They ain't not even bumping me yet though. I've been all up under them. So hopefully they're going to be nice. We've had rough weather all day. And it's, it's cleared up all of a sudden. I'm thankful for that, man. Because... I got in some hives this morning in my house. Took a few in the belly meat. <laughs> Where's he going? He's looking for a safe place. I keep hearing the thunder and it was clear it was clear skies five minutes ago and now it's booming. Feel like it's heading this way? Guys, turning on us. I don't know if we're gonna make it for the full cutout today, but we're gonna sure open it up and see what we got. Yeah, right right to us. <laughs> Ain't nothing like garbage in the eyeballs. Pull this all the way down. Okay, we're right here at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Wow. Yeah, I didn't mean to pull that hard on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's a big one. Hey, look, little fella. You better go to the other side of the yard. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get my smoker going again before I get into that. That's all the smoke you needed? Yeah, I don't even smoke them until they get mad, usually. There's a soffit board. I don't know if y'all could see this and appreciate it, but I'm about to back up for a minute. They're starting to hit me in the back. I'll bring out a flashlight to show y'all because the light on the camera ain't doing it. I 
a nice dense hive. Got a lot of honey stored up in it. Both ends. Jeez. Get on in there, man. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So this is this broad daylight. Sometimes you need a flashlight on these things and it's best to have a good one. Those honey combs on the outside right there are being built right now off of popcorn trees. All those white ones. All this whole side. We're in a flow right now, so they're really building that up fast. It's kind of a medium color. Not super light, not dark honey, but you can kind of see what color it is. A little bit darker than what you see in those cells right there. Two combs out and the honey shower begins. My hat's already getting drenched. Not that you can tell a difference in that and the sweat, but I'm taking a honey shower. That's why my hair is so smooth and shiny. Yappy's so jealous, but he don't take a whole lot of honey showers like I do. If he did, his hair would be nice and full. But Yappy, if you go on my website, you can buy some of this honey and, and uh, do it up, you know. Maybe not so much this honey, because this is going to the homeowner. And I don't know if I'll keep any of this other than to feed back. Just don't have a whole lot of time to fool with it. It's time consuming to crush and strain and bottle honey. It's easier just to take from what you extract out of a managed colony. This is really, if you're paying a premium for somebody that's crushing and straining, there's a reason for it. It's not because the honey's all that much better, but there's a whole lot more involved, a whole lot more labor involved per bottle to crush and strain than there is to just extract off of drawn frames. In bulk, I mean, you know, extracting one frame or crushing and straining just a little bit of honey is not much difference, but when you're extracting a bulk amount to get a batch of honey, crushing and straining is not what you want to be doing. Unless you get it for free and then strain your little heart out. Got a long ways to go on this one. I'm just getting started. I got about an hour and a half of daylight left. So I'm starting to cut these outer combs, just making my way in. And then I'll probably come from the other side because of the way this one's laid out. I'm, gonna, I'm starting over here, gonna cut all that back, kind of funneling down to that framework goes in the corner at a point down there. And this, these wide pieces that go more into the attic, I'm gonna start up there and start cutting back and working my way this way. So that when I end up, or, or when I'm finished, whatever's left is out here and not up in there where I gotta run them out or chase them. I know I've explained that a dozen times before, but a lot of new people on the channel, some of you hadn't heard it yet, so there it is. Now, if you're anything like my wife, you will lose your mind over the thought of me handling this stuff with sweaty hands and then handing it off to them. But every time I handle a comb that is going to be harvested for consumption, 
I've got a clean bucket of wash water. I'm washing my arms well past my wrist. If you see anything wet in the video, it ain't sweat up there where I'm grabbing this, this water because I'm washing my hands real good because I'm very conscientious of that type of food prep handling. I don't want somebody with sweaty hands handling my food, so I'm washing my hands between all the combs. I couldn't really film and cut up here. I was having to hold a bowl and catch this as I was cutting. There was some weight in honey right there. There was probably a full gallon, if not more, right here in this corner. That was three containers of honey right there. And this, this all starts a little bit of honey, but it starts brood comb. And I can see a little bit of honey glistening in here, but I also see brood combs through here. And then back over here, we get into honey again. So I'm not sure how much of this back in is honey. But I'm just about to find out. I'm gonna start by vacuuming back up in here and then cutting all these, all these little, little small pieces out. There's cleanup crew cleaning up those ragged ends on those combs I cut, clean up all that loose honey. I usually let them clean that up. I don't back a whole lot when they're doing that. I back from the other end. But I'll leave down here, I'll leave them working. Less mess on me. Gotta go get some more bags for the brood. I'm about two thirds of the way through. Probably gonna be finishing this one up in the dark. I'll have the hive out before dark, but I gotta put all this soffit back. Everything's wet, man. It's a pain to work in like that. I got that far and starting to lightning and thunder and some big old raindrops coming down. I'm gonna leave that here tonight. That'll give a lot of this honey time to drip out so it's not raining on me tomorrow. I'll come back tomorrow and snag those in the morning. And I got them all over the wall, all over the ground. Give them time to gather up. Let the rain wash my platform off too. <coughs> Back on this one today. Looks like it's gonna storm again though. 
gotta hurry up i got about hours worth of work to do to finish up the cutout and put the soffit back clean all my tools up cut out last night because it was looking like it was going to dump on me it was thunder and lightning some big raindrops started coming down for just a second and then it quit it didn't really start raining for a couple hours after i was gone but it rained some through the night and it looks like it wants to do it again so i gotta make this as quick as possible and get out of here i left everything set up back here last night I didn't feel like loading up and resetting up so anything that wouldn't get hurt in the weather stayed there's a nuke left <laughs> yeah that's about what it is they cleaned up everything except for that J trim I think I think I think the queen is in here I don't think I got her last night it's possible I did but I don't think I did and boy talk about dehydration I've been drinking on these these things here I drank three of them on the job yesterday and a Coke. Of course, the Coke ain't helping nothing, but my calves were Charlie horsing last night. <laughs> Only time I've ever been more dehydrated than that, my forearms locked up when I got into my truck off of a job like this. That rain washed my platform off pretty good last night. I got these huge black ants down in here. Cause all the honey that's running down in the ground. This this hive had a good amount of brood in it. And this hunt, there's too much honey to try to frame all of it. So you can see there's brood right here. Good amount of honey here. I can frame this up. There's plenty for them to get started. I don't need to frame up all that cap. Looks like I may be completely out of the brood and the honey ring is starting to come into this area here so this looks like it has a pattern about like that in this in the rest of this comb there's some good bee bread with pollen and good stuff in it Pollen bottoms. <laughs> oh, keep bumping my camera.
Mm, get out of there. <coughs> Got a whole bunch of drones and this stuff. I may have got the queen last night. That's it. Like I was never here. Just beat the rain. Barely. Going home to get cleaned up and we're headed to Gulf Shores for a few days. Go sit on the beach. It's supposed to be cleared up by the time we get down there. Need me to light the way for you? Oh yeah, you got a little flashlight. <laughs> hey, that one need to win. What is this one called? A Nero or something? Nebo? I don't know. I got the Mac Daddy. Well, if you were carrying a little one, that would be surprising.